This is Nathaniel Oxford with another video tutorial. This is a trumpet tutorial for the song number 18, uh, Down by the Station, and I've written it on the, on the board. Um, you'll notice on the board it says practice strategy, articulation, and tonguing. Um, we're going to go over a practice strategy for how to learn a new song. And then uh, for articulation and uh, tonguing, you might be thinking, hey, uh, aren't those the same thing? Well, tonguing uh, is one technique that we use to do articulations, but there are a lot of different types of uh, articulations. So if I play something that, um, uh, that sounds like this, connected and legato and legato or or slurring that's a type of articulation where you make it very connected um a uh, another type of articulation might be um very staccato right so very short and poppy uh another type of articulation uh could be maybe a softer uh softer articulation so, but I'm still tonguing it right all right another uh, type of articulation might be an accent so if I have a accent one note that's emphasized okay so that's another type of articulation so tonguing is how we do the articulation so for the song down by the station we want to have a really clean uh, articulation on it uh, clean clear maybe a little bit uh, like the note length could be a little bit short note length isn't exactly articulation but it's really uh, connected to the concept of articulation how separated the notes are um, that's uh, so if we play uh, C C D E um, this for this song we want to go ahead and give it a, a clean tongue on each note so your tongue should meet behind your teeth on the roof of your mouth and if you ever play a reed instrument like a saxophone or a clarinet uh tonguing on those instruments actually goes right on the reed the tongue goes on the reed but for trumpet trombone flute uh it goes behind the teeth and it's like you're saying do or two so just make sure that every note starts with a clear uh, tonguey um, on each of these notes. All right, if you are really good at naming the notes, maybe reading the notes by sight as soon as you see them, that's a C, that's a C, that's a D, that's an E, and you can finger them and play them quickly, that's amazing. Um, some of you might not be there uh, yet, and that's okay. So what are you going to do to learn the notes? Well, here's, uh, here's somebody who wrote the notes in right into their part there. C, C, D, E. Uh, you can see by the fingerings here, this is a clarinet book, which at this point in the book has the same notes as the trumpet book, and that's cool. Later on in the book, the clarinet goes a little lower and the trumpet goes a little higher. And then there's some different technique things. So you do want to have a trumpet book, but uh, for this song, all the notes are the same. Uh, all right. Well, what if you don't know where to start with that one? Okay, so go back, turn back one page to page six. And remember, all the new information is in gold boxes, including new notes. So when you didn't know any notes, these three notes were new, C, D, and E. E is the bottom line of the staff with the line going through the note. And it doesn't matter if it's an open circle, if it's a filled in circle, if there's a stick going up off of it, if there's a stick going down off of it, that note head, the bubble part of the note, tells you what note that is, what note name that is. So E, if it has uh, that, um, if it, the bubble part of the note is on the line with the line going through it, that bottom line, that is an E. So if I turn the page, or if I come to the next page, I'm going to see here in number 11, that first note, is also an E. Even though it has a stick on it, the stick doesn't matter. Which direction the stick goes doesn't matter. And the sticks, by the way, are called stems in music. If you have a quarter note E, 
It's a filled in bubble. Again, it has a stick on it and this bubble is black instead of white. It's closed instead of open. So, um, but it's still on the line with the line going through it. So you can compare your notes to the notes that are on, on page six and you can see that which ones are which. So the first note of down by the station is underneath the staff and it has a line going through it. So that's a C. The D would be underneath the staff and just barely touching the staff. So if you've got that stuff down, great. Let's go ahead and um, start in on the song. If you don't have that part down yet, you might want to pause this video and write, start writing in your notes and then check them with the notes that we get going over it. So number 18, uh, the first note is a C. Uh, so the practice strategy we're going to use is uh, one note at a time. And so we're going to start with one note and then we're going to add one note every time that we, um, every time that we do it. So let's do the first note together. It's a half note, so it gets two counts. So if this is what we're counting, you'll get two clicks in one note. C. Okay, one, two, ready. All right, so that's a two count note. Uh, let's add a note. C, C, and those are both open. One, two, ready. All right. Let's do three notes. So it's C, C, D. One, two, ready. And you hear how each note I start it cleanly with a tongue? Two, two, two. Four notes. C, C, D, E. One, two, ready. Five notes. Uh, now notice between the fourth and fifth notes, there's a rest. A rest isn't nothing, so you have to give it one count of silence. One, two, so the notes, let's talk about the notes first. C, C, D, E, rest, E. One, two, ready. All right, let's do six notes. One, so here it is, C, C, D, E, rest, E, rest, D, one, two, ready. All right, let's do seven notes. Um, one thing that you might find too is, I have a mirror next to me, so just a little side note. Um, Having a mirror is handy to see what you're doing with your embouchure. Make sure you're not puffing out. If your notes don't sound that clean when you start them, um, as mine do, check in the uh, mirror and see is something getting distorted when you start your note. Like, or is your when your tongue is it going like this, or is it going or something? And maybe that's why it doesn't sound quite as clean. It should just look like this when you tongue. Nothing changes. Watch. You can see a little bit of the air pressure change right here. But um, other than that, nothing should change. Uh, we were at seven notes, weren't we? So C, C, D, E, rest, E, rest, D, C. One, and D, and C. One, two. Okay, I'm going to let you finish this out. Uh, go ahead and let's just do the first four measures up to where this uh, person has marked in the book. See how they, they marked it halfway at that halfway point? Let's do that. So pause this video and come back and we'll do that part together. Okay, we're back. Let's do the first four measures together. C, C, D, E, rest. D, C, D, E, C, rest, C. One, two. All right. Let's do the whole thing. You might want to uh, pause and practice, come back to this later, come back to it tomorrow. 
Um, if you think you're up to doing the whole thing, then just pause this video now and come back to it and we'll play the whole thing with the backing track, which I have up and ready to go. And I think I have it at a more acceptable volume than I did for my flute video. Okay, I'm starting it. So if you need to pause, pause now and we're back. Number 18, down by the station. I'm going to say the notes the first time and One, do the fingerings. Two, ready. C, C, D, E, E, D, C, D, E, C, 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 D, E, 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 D, D, E, C. And now I'm going to play it. Ready! One, two, ready, play. <laughs> That's it.